give you a better idea of how to play by ear. I'm recording how I start making these tutorial videos on YouTube. That way you'll be able to see the entire thought process from when I first listen to a song to actually sitting down at the piano and playing it. So let's go see what new popular songs are on YouTube. Okay, so I came across this K-pop song that is trending right now. G Idol, oh my god. Okay, so let's play that. We're going to look for a part that So we're going to look for a part that's pretty catchy, that has a clear melody, which is the singing part. I need to be able to hum along with it. That would be pretty clear cut. This one has a lot more beat, this section here, so that's going to be a little bit harder to represent on the keyboard. And now we get the chorus. It's very heavy with different types of percussion. So what we're looking for is a clear melody with harmony so that we can add a left hand part to it. So that's a pretty catchy part. This is the verse. I think we're going to stick with this. Okay, so I'll bring it back to 110. That's where the verse starts. So we have. I'm just making that part up. Let me redo that. So we can just do that little portion there. So really important rhythm. We need to know what the beat count is going to be for this. So as we were going, just had one, two, three. Or we could even go one and two and three and da 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 da. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we've established our rhythm. Now, go back, make sure we have the right melody. I want to figure out what the tonal center is. So when you hear people talk about, oh, we're going to play in the key of C major, D minor, whatever it may be, that is the tonal center. So if you're singing your song, the sound, it's kind of an interesting way to explain it, but when you're singing it, it almost feels like the sound wants to go towards a specific tone. It wants to finish off with um, a specific sound. So we have So when you get really familiar with your scales, major and minor scales, then you'll be able to piece those melody tones into a specific scale. So that's going to be my tonal center. So the next thing is to figure out what that is on the piano.
we want to make sure we remember what that melody goes like. There's our tonal center. You want to be able to match your whistling, your humming, whatever, to an actual tone on the keyboard. So that is the letter E on the piano. And just by remembering what the melody goes like, I know it has a bit of a sad tone to it. So it's going to be in a minor key. So maybe E minor, or it could be some um, mode of E minor. But we'll just stick with E minor. Do a little bit lower so it's not so high in pitch. Okay, so we've got the actual melody now. And to add an accompaniment, we'll go back, listen to the song, and try to figure out what we're going to add to the left hand. But just off the bat, knowing a bit of harmony, so got to know your rhythm, got to have um, at least a short-term memory of what the melody sounds like, and a lot of people automatically do. So if you've heard a really catchy song, on the radio, you're driving, and then once you get to your destination, you're like, oh wow, you know, I'm actually whistling or, or humming this, this song that I just listened to a few minutes ago. So a lot of people can do it. And if it's something that you do struggle with, again, just doing exercises like this, listening over and over, and trying to repeat, no different than trying to learn a language. You gotta listen to how it's pronounced, um, get, get the writing down as well, and then practice yourself. Rhythm is really important as well. We want to make sure that we master the rhythm. And one way that I ensure that my rhythm is correct is I'll open up another program on the computer to write out the sheet music. And then that way it forces me to do my counting and make sure that I've got the exact rhythm. And then also I use that file to be able to make the falling bar pattern for the tutorials. For the left hand, just knowing my theory, I know in E minor we have the following seven chords that we can use. to accompany the melody. So I'm starting on an E in the beginning, so we're probably going to use the E minor chord. That's a possibility. Uh, we'll have to go back and listen again and make sure that we get the right one there. Okay, so I'm pretty confident with the melody. Now we've got to get that accompaniment, which is the harmony, the part that makes the melody sound a little bit more rich and full. And we'll go back to 110 here. A little bit earlier, actually, into the chorus. So we have a falling pattern in there and I recognize that from other pieces I've played in the past, but you've got... 
bum dun 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 So we're gonna skip that rhythm entirely that they're doing for the accompaniment part and try just to get the right tones. So we have this falling pattern that'll work nicely with the melody. Listen to that again. All right, so we can add that in there and we wanna keep this tutorial fairly simple. So I'm not gonna to add too much fluff, but when I first get started, I want to enrich the harmony a little bit so I have a good idea of what sounds the best. And then we break it down and make it even more simple. Okay, so remember the We have this falling pattern while we do the melody. So we have. Now we're finishing with um, this chord, or actually probably should be this chord. We want to raise the seventh uh, in E minor so that we have a, a perfect cadence here. So I think that uh, that might just work out well if I go. Very simple left hand break it down like this and I like to just show one finger at a time because actually it takes a lot of practice to be able to use all the fingers comfortably to actually play chords and do scales and things like that so uh, we're just going to focus on one finger at a time and then that way um, we just kind of get rid of some of the variables that make playing pretty challenging. So so once I've got that in my head, um, again, this is a really good exercise for memory, short-term memory. Figure it out, and then we're gonna go and write out the sheet music for this so that we get the exact rhythm and then I can make the other components of the tutorial. Okay, so I have the sheet music from a previous song that I was working on. I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff. It's just easier to um, continue with the previous file because every time I have to set up a new file, I have to set up how many uh, staves I need and um, and all the different components so it just takes a little bit longer so we're going to call this I don't even remember the name of this song there's so much for short-term memory all right so this is called oh my god by G idle Something like that. I'll have to double check their spelling later. We're in the key of E minor, which has an F sharp. If you don't know that stuff, I mean, it's not super important. You're not necessarily going to be writing sheet music. 
if you want to end up just being able to play by ear and just for fun, uh, well, you definitely do have to develop the ear first. Uh, and you can get away with playing and not knowing any theory. Uh, you'll have to hack away a little bit more at the keyboard to figure out exactly the right harmonies that you're going to be playing, but it is possible. Um, now in my head, I'm going through the theory and, and the rhythm, and I want to make sure that I get it as accurate as possible. However, that took years of training to be able to get that knowledge in my head. And then now more time to be able to practice and actually use it properly. But at least you get to see the entire process of how I'm working through this. And later on, I might have to go back and refine a little bit, to make sure I get it more accurate. Okay, so we have established the beat. So one and two and three and four and one and two and two e and a uh, three. And a uh, four E and a uh, one, two, three, four, one. No, one and two and three and four. And another thing to want to know about music is form. So, what I just counted out there was one phrase. And I'm going to break this part of the verse up in two phrases. So, we have So that was one phrase and then it actually repeats. So we could probably just do this tutorial in two parts or to make it easier, I could expand this one phrase and make it four bars long. So it'd be one, two, that would be one bar, one measure. So it, it's basically this piece right here. This is one measure. Here's another measure. Some people call them bars. That has four counts in it, four beats. The bottom number means what type of a note receives one count. Um, again, you know, more theory. So we have a couple ways that we can do this. I think I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'll do four bars for one phrase and then that way the notes will be spread out a little bit more as opposed to when I'm trying to condense it into two bars. Um, and that also plays a factor when I record the sheet music part of the videos. So let's see here. We have one, two, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, three, e and a four, and a... Okay, we started on an E. I'll go on this E here. One two, three, one, and two, and three, e, and one, and two, and two, and we're going to have to tie that. Where are my ties? Ay, ay, ay. lost the format of the screen there earlier, but that's fine. This works. So we have one and two and three and four and one, two, three, 
One and two and three and four and... All right, no, I added the one E and accounting. That's just to split up the beats even more instead of splitting them up into two parts, one and two and split them up into four. Because I'm trying to remember the melody and get the right rhythm. So counting is super crucial for me anyways. Uh, we'll get this tied. So we have <clears throat> one and two and three and four. I have to tie that to the next beat and four and that's going to tie into the next beat as well. And you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just put, for those of you that know your notes, why don't you just put a quarter note here? You know, why don't you just make this a dotted quarter? Well, I want to separate the sections of the bar as well. I want people who are reading this to be able to know where the strong beats are and also keep the measure as symmetrical as possible. So it's not good practice to put a, a large value note in the middle of your bar. It's good to, to split up all of the beats separately and it's easier to see it that way. And then it helps with the counting as well. So we have one and two and three and four and one. So I need another quarter here. And then we go. One and two and three and four and. So we almost have four beats there. So we need a three count note. We're going to tie that to the other half beat. Get rid of that dot. And then copies it. The other note can fill the entire bar. Okay, I can get rid of this measure right here. And then that will be the entire melody. One quick mention here. A lot of the times when people are playing keys on the piano, they will say they're playing notes. And if they slipped or something, oops, I played a wrong note. Um, I think it would be better practice if we just called these things notes. The actual symbols on the sheet music. The keys on the piano, well, those are called keys, just like strings on a guitar are called strings. And the sound that comes out, those are the tones. So if we kind of separate those three things, I think it would be better practice that way as well. So these are notes. On the piano, we have keys. And the sound that comes out is the tone. So that being said, let me play this so that we can see if we're getting the right tone. I'm going to speed it up here. Three, four, and one, two, three, four. Yeah, that sounds good. Now we're going to add the accompaniment part. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So it's just full bar for each of the left hand notes. In this case, I can say that because I'm actually drawing notes here. So we want that guy. We go down a step, down another step, and finish here. Okay, so let's play what we have.
Nice. So now when I do my tutorial, I'll split it up into four parts. I'll teach that one first. Then I'll teach that bar. Then I'll teach that one. And part four, in this case, is going to be super easy. We finish off with one key in each hand. Okay, perfect. So we're going to save that and I'll start working on the tutorial for this. So thanks for joining me on that journey of how I go about figuring out songs by ear and playing them on the keyboard and then turning them into these full tutorials for the rest of you to be able to just sit down and follow those and then be able to start playing actual uh, recognizable songs. Uh, with both your hands, one finger in each. So it's fairly simple that way. Now, if you did find that quite overwhelming, lots of topics we talked about, rhythm, short-term memory, being able to listen to a melody and then repeat it. Uh, and again, I, I talked about how you've probably done it in the past and haven't even thought about it much. You've heard something on the radio, super catchy, and then you go and you, you whistle that throughout the day or, or it gets stuck in your head. So we call those earworms. Even if you don't get the perfect pitch when you're humming it, as long as you've got that perfect tone in your head so that when you play it on your instrument, you can notice whether it matches or it doesn't. That's important. Whether you can sing it out perfectly with the proper tones that takes skill as well to become a singer. I mean, you know, that's years and years of practicing your, um, your vocal training and, um, and make sh making sure that, you know, you don't sound like a, like a goat like me right now because my, my voice isn't, um, isn't trained for singing, that's for sure. But, you know, I try my best and as long as I can match those pitches as best as possible, then it makes my job easier when I sit down uh, at the keyboard and I want to match the sound that's in my head to my voice and then to the keys. So if you're not sure how to get started and you want a step-by-step -step guide in terms of how to be able to do what we just did in this video here, visit pianohooks.com for full lessons. We've got full breakdowns of how to sit at the piano with proper posture because that's obviously very important know the letter names of the keys on the piano because that will help in the long run. Your playing will become so much more efficient when you don't have to follow somebody telling you which keys to press on the piano. Learning basic theory, you should know your scales, you should know the chords that are played within these scales and then being able to piece those together because if you've got your scales down and then you can figure out the chords that belong to that key, you are going to be able to listen to a song, piece the melody together, and figure out what scale it belongs to, and then start adding the harmony to go with it. And further to that, if you want to make your playing even more fancy, then you've got to start learning some interesting left-hand patterns, arpeggios, um, get good at your octaves, solid chords, broken chords, all of those different ways that you can play the, well, the seven chords that we talked about that I showed you earlier with this song. Then you can make your playing um, a lot more fancy and a lot more showy. So if you haven't yet done so, please hit that like button, subscribe for future videos and tutorials. And I'd love to see you guys share on your social media some of the songs that you have learned from the Piano Hooks YouTube channel. Ciao for now.